Hello, my name is Stephanie Stancheva. I'm a professor of economics at Harvard. Today I will present a paper about taxation and innovation in the 20th century. In this paper we ask, do taxes affect innovation? This is a really challenging question to answer because we really lack systematic long-run data on innovation. And the other challenge is that it's hard to say something was caused by taxes and not by other things. So to address those challenges, we actually construct three completely new data sets for the US. One is the panel of all US inventors since the beginning of the patent office, which allows us to track all inventors over time, where they live, how many patents they produce, how good those patents were, the second is a panel of all the R&D labs in the US for all firms. And we have the associated research employment and patents produced by them. And the final data set is a big database of all corporate and personal state level taxes in the US. Armed with this data, we try to study systematically the effect of taxes, corporate and personal income taxes on inventors, on firms that do R&D, and on innovation at the state level. And what we find is that taxes negatively influence the quantity of innovation, the, the quality of innovation, and where innovation takes place. This is true for the US, but it's possibly also true at an international level. In fact, uh, in another paper in the modern era, we actually show that superstar inventors, those with the best uh, and the most patents, tend to move in response to top tax rates. They tend to locate in lower tax places. Of course, there's also mitigating factors. Uh, what we show in, in both of these papers is that a major concern for inventors is where people work in their areas and you know, which places are good for their own innovation. And that tends to dampen their response to taxes. You can view it as, a, as an amenity um, for which people are happy to pay with higher taxes. I think it would be very interesting to replicate our study in other countries uh, and among others in France. It would be completely possible because there is a European patent office which also goes back way in time. And so digitizing that patent data from the European patent office the way we did for the US and then turning it into a panel where inventors can be tracked over time would be entirely possible. So this can be done historically and of course it can also be done in the modern day period would be very interesting because France has a quite different tax system from the US and we could expect the effects to be, to be different. I think our study informs one of the costs of taxation. Um, we know that all taxes have some costs and it's important to quantify them. So one perhaps unusual cost that is not often thought of is the cost in terms of perhaps lost innovation and very highly skilled, qualified people moving away. So this is one part of the equation, and it's important to know the magnitudes of these effects. Of course, there are many other parts and parameters that enter uh, the optimal tax equation, if you want. There's many benefits from taxes in terms of raising revenues and redistribution. There's also other efficiency costs in terms of labor supply or participation in the labor market. So this is just one little piece of that whole equation uh, that determines the right level of taxes. So in my future research, uh, I'm going to continue stu to study the effects of taxation uh, on innovation and actually the interplay between taxes and innovation. Um, one thing that we're doing is how to better design a tax system that doesn't hurt and perhaps even stimulates uh, innovation. Another thing that I'm really interested in is what informs our social preferences, our views, attitudes and perceptions towards different policies. Uh, for this, I use large online surveys and experiments uh, which is basically a sort of new social lab laboratory in which you can explore what do people think, what are their attitudes, are there misperceptions, are, is there a lack of information on different topics. And I think this is very important because there are things which are intangible, like perceptions and attitudes, that you cannot see in any other data, no matter how good it is. <laughs> 